On this F Troop Facts and Goose video, find out how the Akawi Indians got their names and what deviltry did the writers of the show try to get past the censors. Did Agarn travel in time on one episode? See how many times and how many ways one man can fall and still get up. See the stars meet the same real life bear on different series at two different times. F Troop only lasted two seasons with 65 episodes, but it's been running in syndication pretty much ever since it went off the air. The show had good enough ratings for another season, but apparently the studio was unhappy with the added cost of producing the second season in color. And Warner Brothers' new owners at the time thought it was wasteful to use so much of the Warner Ranch for a single 30-minute show. F Troop is the story of Corporal Agarn and Sergeant O'Rourke, who run an illegal saloon underneath the nose of Captain Palmerter, who's in charge of Fort Courage that houses the worst soldiers in Army history. The series begins shortly after the Civil War. But this time, fate takes a hand. An excess of pollen fills the air. A hero who sneezed. Get out! Abruptly seized retreat and reversed it to victory. And so within a matter of days, victory came to the Union forces. So it was planned he command. F Troop. Captain Palmiter, played by Ken Berry, was considered a hero. The scourge of the West. Even though his heroic deed was the result of a sneeze. Captain Palmerter possessed amazing acrobatic abilities on top of being extremely clumsy. But he was also very lucky as if there was a method to his madness. <laughs> Forrest Tucker played Sergeant O'Rourke who illegally owned the saloon while being in the army. He was the brains of the show and the fort. Without him, Fort Courage would have fell apart. I think that makes you a bigger man than I am. Well, as long as you want to put it that way, yeah. Sergeant O'Rourke was a man of business. Could he help it if almost everything he was doing was against Army regulations? He improved relations with the Indians by allowing the Hakawis to make booze for his saloon. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. True. Yes, Sergeant O'Rourke was a shining example of what a businessman can accomplish in America. Have you ever known me to suggest anything underhanded or un unethical or unfair? How come we have Reveille at 10 o'clock? I love how Sergeant Rourke handles the captain when he asks why are they having Reveille like three hours later than they're supposed to. Yo, but the captain is forgetting there's a, a three hour time difference. <laughs> Larry Storch played Corporal Agarn, Sergeant Rourke's business partner, who was a bit dumber than Rourke. Agarn was true blue and loyal to a fault, but he could get emotional at times. Happy New Year! Hey, Agarn, where are you going? To spread the word in that temple of wickedness! Agarn could really get caught up in the moment. I remember now he's a partner in the uh, saloon business, O'Rourke and Enterprises. Repent, you sinners, repent! Sit down with that bottle of demon rum! Don't give in to temptation! When Agarn commits to something, though, he really commits. Like when Harvey Corman came to visit. Right, Corporal? Jawohl, mein Herr! Because that is the way we do things in Prussia! Glory be! Or when he joined the temperance movement. <laughs> or decided that he'd rather be an Indian instead of a soldier. He did have a great way with words, though. Uh, not during our month and say. I said, here comes Jane, and she looks pale. <laughs> What's going on? You got your shack back! <laughs> the almost blind lookout was Vanderbilt, played by Joe Brooks. What kind of duty does this man have? He's our lookout. <laughs> Comanches or Apaches! 
Apaches! There's somebody! There's millions of it! Trooper Duffy, played by Bob Steele, was always recounting tales of his time fighting at the Alamo with Davy Crockett, even though nobody actually survived the Alamo. Very interesting in your service record. What's that, sir? You were killed in action. <laughs> James Hampton played Dobbs, the bugler, who, of course, was a terrible bugler. Wrangler Jane, played by Melody Patterson, was always trying to get Captain Palmerter to marry her. <laughs> Frank Dakova played Chief Wild Eagle, and he often got the funniest lines of the show. You see, voting is one of the processes of American democracy. Oh, voting means taking land away from Indians. <laughs> you want Indian attack? We give you Indian attack. Cost you twenty dollars. Ora manakura. <laughs> Peace-loving Akali fight Indian? That's your job. And then there was a time he predicted a political scandal that wouldn't happen for decades. I was told you even smoked a peace pipe. I didn't inhale. Don Diamond played Wild Eagle's right-hand man, Crazy Cat. Craze, as Agarn called him, was always waiting impatiently to get his chance to be chief of the Hokaris. Over my dead body. That's when I become chief. <laughs> how did the Hakawis get their name? Did you ever wonder how the Hakawis got their name? I'd you ask. <laughs> Many years or moons ago, the tribe left Massachusetts because the pilgrims were, you know, ruining the neighborhood. The tribe traveled west many, 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 many miles until one day the tribe fell over a cliff. And then the medicine man said to Wild Eagle's ancestor, I think we lost. Where the heck are we? I don't know if this next one is true or not. It sounds a bit far-fetched, but I read that originally they wanted to name the Indians the, and I want to be real clear on this, the Fagawi. That's F-U-G-A-W-E. But censors put an end to that real quick when they heard about this joke. You know, where the, well, you get the picture. Hostile? What is hostile? The Hakawis were a peace-loving tribe. They were more interested in love than war, and they barely even knew what the meaning of the word hostile was. Unfriendly. No friends. You very hostile Indian. One of the ongoing problems that F Troop faced was that doggone cannon. It would never fire unless you kicked it. And then it would always, well, usually hit the watchtower or maybe the water tower or maybe Jane's store window way down into town. Next, let's check out some goose from F Troop. In the episode Don't Look Now, one of our cannon is missing. I wonder if that's a goof. Anyway, in this episode, O'Rourke has lent the Akawis the troop cannon for their moon festival, and they don't want to give it back. However, in the establishing shot, the one they use on every episode of the fort, when they come back from the commercial, the cannon is clearly seen sitting in its usual spot next to the flagpole. I not give up cannon! <laughs> Listen, it's only a cannon. In the episode of Rourke vs. O'Reilly, a fire breaks out in the saloon, and it's obviously way too large to be inside of Rourke's. This is one of those many cases where they use stock movie footage. It works, but it's weird when you notice how much smaller it is in the saloon after the fight is over. In the episode Indian Fever, the barracks window seems to magically open and close on its own. In this episode, Agarn thinks there's an Indian intruder outside, so he's very attentive to the window. First, Agarn opens the window, then it falls and his finger is trapped. The third night in a row that you woke me up! So we see O'Rourke saving Agarn by opening up the window, and then they go back to bed. Now, it could be argued that Agarn closed the window when we couldn't see him, but it doesn't look like it. Agarn looks up, and the window is closed. <laughs> so 
Sergeant O'Rourke gets up to investigate, and now the window is open. Ah, but I do think there is an explanation for this goof. Perhaps the window shut by itself, like it did on Agarn's finger. And then when the Indian came by, he raised it up because he was getting ready to go inside and sneak in on uh, O'Rourke and Agarn. In the episode Bye Bye Balloon, Agarn gets trapped in a runaway hot air balloon. But he must have also went on a trip into the Twilight Zone because it appears he also has traveled through time as below we see what looks like a modern day paved road. Hmm. It is Balloon! The episode The West Goes Ghost is sort of an interesting precursor to Tucker and Storch's future series, The Saturday Morning Ghostbusters. O'Rourke and Agarn spend the night in a ghost town. Now, next thing you know, you want me to put you to bed with a teddy bear. Have you got one, Sarge? Sergeant O'Rourke asks Corporal Agarn if he wants a teddy bear to sleep with, but the teddy bear was not invented until 1903 in honor of President Theodore Roosevelt. The F Troop series took place after the Civil War, somewhere around the 1860s, well before Roosevelt was even president yet. Speaking of bears, in the first season, Captain Parmenter faces off against a man in a bear suit. That's supposed to be a bear. A few years later, Ken Berry faced a real bear on Grizzly Adams. Hold on, I, I don't even live here. No, go away. In the following year, Larry Storch and Forrest Tucker would end up facing that same bear on Grizzly Adams. Ernie, Ernie, here we go again. Catch me, Ernie. James Hampton, Tucker, and Storch were all on an episode of Love American Style before then. Of course, being a teenager in the 80s, I'll always remember James Hampton for playing uh, Teen Wolf's dad. Well, I probably need a video on it on its own just for uh, stuff that these great actors have been in before and after F Troop. If you'd like to see me do another video on F Troop, like what did they do before and after, and maybe uh, one on all the great guest stars like Vincent Price. Now that's what I call a perfect. They actually had the first voice of Charlie Brown, Winnie, the uh, voice of the original Winnie the Pooh. Just all kinds of great actors have been on this show. Just let me know in the comments uh, below what you'd like to see. Let me know what you thought of this video. I'm also going to link to uh, one of my older videos uh, featuring the uh, Saturday Morning Ghostbusters that Larry Storch and Forrest Tucker starred in. That was one of my favorites as a kid. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for future notifications. And please let me know what you think in the comments below. It really helps me out a lot. It helps out the uh, video. And please, if you would, share the video. If you really like it, share it with your family and friends. That would be really helpful. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.